Now, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, and welcome to this week's episode of Maconomics. I'm your host, Ross Mack, and I'm here to try to help you get to a bag. We got a new caller calling. Talk to me what you got. Now, Ross, I've been hearing all my friends talking about G5, like Wi-Fi. What is it? It better be fine, whatever it is. So look, D5 stands for Decentralized Finance. And what that is, is just an online world of alternative financial services powered by cryptocurrency and blockchain technology. So D5 is literally uses smart contracts to replace traditional intermediaries, such as the banks and the lenders that we use today. The businesses that we interact with on an everyday basis that manage our finances are literally replaced by software. And so because of this, there's no central authority to report to in this D5 space. Now look, DeFi's goal is to democratize finance by replacing legacy centralized institutions with peer-to-peer -peer relationships that can provide a full spectrum of financial services from everyday banking, loans and mortgages to complicated contractual relationships and asset training. I know that sounds a little interesting, right? But look, let me actually talk about the problem that it's looking to actually solve. Because today, almost every aspect of banking, lending and trading is managed by centralized systems, operated by governing bodies and gatekeepers. So look, regular customers have to deal with a lot of financial middlemen to get access to everything from auto loans to mortgages to trading stocks and bonds. And look, we all know that it can be a lot of discrimination when it comes to this, right? We've all have heard the stories of blacks not getting approved for the same loans as our white counterparts. We also have heard the horror stories of the predatory loans from 2008. And we also have heard about black family homes not getting appraised as high as homes owned by white families. In fact, there are several banks that have already paid out hundreds of millions of dollars in discrimination lawsuit settlements, and there probably will be much more moving forward, right? But that's the thing, right? That's where DeFi comes in. Why? Well, because it's challenging the centralized system by disempowering the middlemen and the gatekeepers. And instead, it's gonna be empowering everyday people via peer-to-peer -peer exchanges. AKA, you don't need to walk into a bank and run the risk of getting discriminated against because you're not dressed the way they wanna see, or you don't look like the type of client that they generally wanna do business with. DeFi takes the key elements of the work done by banks today and instead puts it in the hands of those regular people. So look, let me actually give you an example. So today, you might put your savings in an online savings account and earn about 0.5% interest rate on your money, right? Well, then the bank will turn around and lend that money to another customer and they will make about 3% interest. And what they do, they gonna pocket the 2.5% profit. With DeFi, people can literally lend their savings directly to others, cutting out that 2.5% profit loss, and instead they can earn the full 3% return on their money. Now look, with all new forms of technology, there are obviously gonna be some drawbacks. So I would be remiss if I didn't talk about them, right? And one of those things is, look, there's no such thing as consumer protection laws just yet. There's very little recourse should a transaction go south or just, you know, don't go your way. Because in centralized finance today, for instance, the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation reimburses deposit account holders up to $250,000 per account per institution if that bank fails. So in other words, if you were to use an online DeFi company and something happens to that company, well, you don't have that FDIC insurance. Or if you accidentally send some money to someone else or you experience fraud, well, unfortunately, it's not many people you can get on the phone with. And those are the few drawbacks, but they're obviously trying to build out DeFi so that it is much easier moving forward. Thanks for calling in, and I truly hope that helps. And look, look, no DeFi is not like Wi-Fi, but who knows, down the line, it might be everywhere just like it. But next caller, talk to me what you got. Now, thanks to our good neighbors at State Farm for sponsoring this segment. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there.